Hello everyone. Welcome to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at ILO Pathology. This is the part 2 of tissue repair uh, series which I will be covering and in this part 2 I will be talking about the scar formation that is deposition of connective tissue. So basically uh, in the next uh, 20 minutes or so we will be talking about uh, the process of repair by connective tissue deposition. That means we need to understand the various steps involved in scar formation. In detail about angiogenesis we will be studying and then deposition of connective tissue and then in brief uh, features of uh, granulation tissue and finally we will end the topic with understanding the concepts of tissue remodeling. Briefly recollecting what we discussed in the last uh, tutorial that is repair occurs by two processes. One is regeneration which basically restores the normal cells and second one is scarring which basically is a connective tissue deposition. Right. So regeneration occurs in tissues where, which have cells with the capacity to proliferate whereas scarring occurs in the tissues with cells without capacity to proliferate also if the tissue is very severely damaged. We discussed this in great detail when we discussed about regeneration in the earlier tutorial. Right. So in today's tutorial we will talk about scarring okay if the repair cannot be accomplished by regeneration alone so what happens there is replacement of the injured cells with the connective tissue so it basically sort of patches the tissue and that is referred to as formation of scar okay so it's a combination of regeneration of some residuals and the scar formation which tells you that the whole tissue is being replaced or repaired by either regeneration or scar formation. Now what are the various steps involved in the scar formation? First, whenever there is an injury, the first thing which happens is the formation of hemostatic plug. You know that. So that stops bleeding. It basically provides scaffold for the deposition of fibrin. So after having this hemostatic plug then you have inflammation basically to eliminate the offending agent right so during the process of inflammation the cells do proliferate in the process of inflammation and subsequent repair process the cells proliferate we discussed in detail about the various aspects of cell proliferation right so the proliferation of cells could be the cells of the remnants of injured tissue it could be vascular endothelial cells it could be fibroblast all these cells proliferate and then results in the formation of granulation tissue which we'll be discussing in detail so after the formation of granulation tissue later stages there is deposition of connective tissue and finally there is formation of scar so this is essentially the steps in scar formation now what are all the cells involved in the scar formation the most important cells are the macrophages okay and particularly if you remember i have talked about the macro various types of macrophages when i discussed grand i mean the granulomatous inflammation in the earlier videos if it's good if you go back and have a look at the, this video okay so the macrophages can be activated uh, in two ways one is classical activation that is m1 macrophages and two is alternative activation that is m2 macrophages okay m2 type of activation so the classical activation the classically activated macrophages are basically inflammatory they are microbicidal they promote inflammation whereas the alternatively activated macrophages they are the ones which help in repair process they are anti-inflammatory so whatever we discuss in the entire series of tissue repair will be the macrophages which are activated by alternative alternative pathway they are alternatively activated are m2 type of macrophages okay so moving on to the steps of car formation now we will understand in detail about the formation of granulation tissue that is the hallmark of tissue repair okay to understand the formation of granulation tissue we need to understand granulation tissue is basically a composed of newly formed blood vessels so we should know what is angiogenesis angiogenesis is the process of new blood vessel development from existing blood vessels very important to note that this is the process of new blood vessel development from existing vessels in contrast to vasculogenesis which is also a process of new blood vessel development but this is de novo this one occurs in the embryo during the embryological development and the vessels which are formed are mesodermal in origin if you if you if you have read embryology you will understand that the vasculogenesis is a process of formation of new blood vessel in the embryo which are mesodermal in origin now we will concentrate more on angiogenesis which is 
process of new blood vessel development by egg from existing blood vessels now this is a blood vessel i'll just try to try to take you through the formation of blood vessel by series of illustration so this is the blood vessel these are the endothelial lining okay endothelial lining of the blood vessel and that's a basement membrane and these are the supporting cells called pericytes okay so what happens to these blood vessels during injury the first step which happens is vasodilatation you know the way the, the the dilatation of the vessel wall vasodilatation can occur and also increased permeability we we discussed in great detail about the acute inflammatory uh, response you know we discussed vascular events inflammation that is vasodilatation and increased permeability vasodilatation is brought about by nitric oxide whereas increased permeability is brought about or induced by vascular endothelial growth factors after vasodilatation the pericytes you know the pericytes which are surrounding the blood vessels they tend to get separated okay the separation of pericytes happens again because of response of nitric oxide and now imagine that this is a site of tissue injury the pericytes are separated the basement membrane is exposed and then you have vascular endothelial growth factor released by these adjoining cells it is released by the macrophages released by all these things these vascular endothelial growth factors are the ones which are responsible for angiogenesis now what happens the vascular endothelial growth factor diffuses through the basement membrane and then goes on attaches on to the endothelial cells okay these endothelial cells have receptors for vascular endothelial growth factor now one of the vascular one of the endothelial cells takes the lead for formation of new blood vessel and that cell is referred to as tip cell now what does this tip cell do they secrete certain chemicals which basically degrades the basement membrane so the basement membrane is degraded once there is breakdown of basement membrane the tip cell advances forward okay advances forward towards the site of injury so it forms a sprout this is a beginning of formation of new blood vessel that is called vessel vessel sprouting okay so this is a tissue injury the tip cell starts moving towards the site of uh, tissue injury and that is called migration of endothelial cells this is brought about also brought about by matrix metalloproteinases because that they the matrix metalloproteinases you know they help in degradation of extracellular matrix okay that helps in extension of the vascular newly formed blood vessels extension of the vascular tube now what happens next is behind the tip cells the endothelial cells starts proliferating okay so the proliferation of endothelial cells starts to occur this is brought about by vascular endothelial growth factor a and fibroblast growth factors okay these two also help in proliferation of the endothelial cells remember in the early stages there is no lumen okay all these endothelial cells are fused they are just mass of cells which are behind these tip cells okay now once there is proliferation of endothelial cells later what happens is the remodeling take place what is this remodeling some sort of vacuole starts appearing in endothelial cells and then these vacuoles they coils together to form capillary tubes okay so this remodeling into capillary tubes is brought about by angiopoietins 1 and 2 the same thing is happening in other blood vessel also so what happens next is formation i mean the fusion of these tip cells and once the tip cells are fused it remodels into capillary tubes and it anastomoses with the adjoining blood vessel to form a capillary tube okay so initially these capillaries are immature capillaries because they just they just contain endothelial cells they do not have the supporting uh, scaffold in the form of basement membrane later these capillaries mature with the deposition of basement membrane all these things are brought about by platelet derived growth factor transforming growth factor beta and later the pericytes are being laid okay so the presence of pericytes the presence of basement membrane is what makes the blood vessel a mature blood vessel or mature capillary okay so recruitment of periendothelial cells or pericytes and then deposition of basement membrane all these because of platelet derived growth factor and transforming growth factor so this is how angiogenesis takes place this is how 
there is formation of new blood vessel from the pre-existing blood vessel. Now next thing is we talk about deposition of connective tissue. We talked about how the blood vessels are formed, right? Now we talk about deposition of connective tissue. It occurs by two things. One, there is migration and proliferation of fibroblasts into the site of injury. Okay, just like vessels move towards the site of injury, even there is migration and proliferation of fibroblasts into the site of injury and at the site of injury, these fibroblasts deposit matrix proteins. Okay, basically collagen. All these things are brought about by platelet derived growth factor, fibroblast growth factor 2 and then TGF beta synthesized by macrophages, mast cells and lymphocytes and you know that these macrophages are alternatively activated macrophages, REM2 type of macrophages. Let us understand what is this transforming growth factor beta. This TGF beta is the most important cytokine involved in tissue repair particularly repaired by deposition of connective tissue. So what does this do? This stimulates fibroblast migration and proliferation. It also increases the synthesis of collagen and fibronectin. In the later stages, it inhibits metalloproteinases and by doing so, it decreases the degradation of extracellular matrix. This degradation of extracellular matrix was needed when there was remodeling of vascular uh, newly formed blood vessels were taking place, right? Now, after formation of blood vessels, it is no longer needed and this TGF beta inhibits those metalloproteinases. And lastly, it also inhibits lymphocyte proliferation and leukocyte activity, thereby limiting and terminating the inflammatory response. So that is the reason why TGF beta is also referred to as an anti-inflammatory cytokine. Now let us understand what is a granulation tissue. Now we know the steps involved in the formation of newly formed blood vessels by angiogenesis and next deposition of connective tissue by fibroblast. That is what results in the formation of granulation tissue. This is a photograph from a, you know, a pink soft granular appearance which is found in the surface of healing wounds. This is granulation tissue. So macroscopically, this is how the granulation tissue looks on the surface of healing wounds. So let us understand the microscopical features of granulation tissue uh, by this virtual slide. Look at this. This is, I'm trying to zoom in the virtual slide of granulation tissue. What is that you're looking at? These are spaces of varying sizes containing RBCs, right? Look at this. All these are vascular spaces. So these are all newly formed blood vessels. Look at this numerous capillaries are newly formed blood vessels which are seen in the granulation tissue. This is the first component. Presence of numerous newly formed thin walled capillaries. Okay. Apart from that, what is that you're looking at? You can see lots and lots of inflammatory cells in the background, right? Like all those blue dots which are sprinkled, they're all mononuclear cells. And you also see these elongated cells. Can you see this? These are elongated cells. They are spindle shaped cells. They're nothing but fibroblasts. So the component of granulation tissue includes the end result of angiogenesis, presence of numerous newly formed blood vessels, thin walled capillaries. Second, the presence of connective tissue deposition in the form of presence of fibroblasts, lots of these spindle shaped cells in the background. And thirdly, the background inflammatory cells. You know, these inflammatory cells are lymphocytes, macrophages and other leukocytes. Okay. And all these inflammatory cells are needed. Why? Why they are needed? They are needed to synthesize and secrete those growth factors. And also, you see that in between these blood vessels, there is space. That's edema. Okay. You find edema in a granulation tissue. Edema is seen because these newly formed blood vessels are very leaky. Okay. That's why there is extravasation of plasma into the extravascular space. Okay. So edema, newly formed blood vessels, fibroblast presence and inflammatory cells in the background constitutes granulation tissue. That's about, that's all about microscopy of granulation tissue. So once we understood the granulation tissue, let us see what happens during progression of healing. Healing progression means what? It means progressively there is decrease in the fibroblast proliferation, decrease in the formation of new blood vessels and increase in the synthesis of collagen. Okay, the vessels reduce in number, 
the fibroblast proliferate decreases increase in the synthesis of collagen all this results in the formation of in the conversion of a highly vascular granulation tissue to a largely avascular scar and that is called a scar maturation now some of the fibroblasts within the granulation tissue you know they acquire features of smooth muscles and they are transformed into myofibroblasts and these myofibroblasts helps in the contraction of the scar and that is what happens during scar contraction okay this is how your healing tissue progresses now let us understand what do you mean by tissue remodeling so so remodeling of the connective tissue basically is a balance between synthesis of extracellular matrix and degradation of extracellular matrix proteins okay now this degradation of extracellular matrix proteins is brought about by matrix metalloproteinases in short mmps what are these matrix metalloproteinases they can be collagenases which are mmp1 mmp2 and mmp3 which cleaves the fibrillar collagen they can be gelatinases which degrade the amorphous collagen and fibronectin and they can be stromiolysins which basically cleave so many products like proteoglycans laminin fibronectin and even amorphous collagen so these are the three important matrix metalloproteinases now once the functions of matrix metalloproteinases are over okay you cannot keep on cleaving collagen right so it has to be uh, the function of matrix metalloproteinases has to be stopped so that is brought about by tissue inhibitors of metalloproteinases nothing in short they are called as timps which are basically secreted by mesenchymal cells surrounding this tissue and they inhibit matrix metalloproteinases after their function is over so that is how remodeling of tissue takes place so this is all about tissue remodeling so in summary we talked about the second process of repair the first one was regeneration the second one is by connective tissue deposition right we discussed the steps in scar formation we talked about angiogenesis we talked about how the connective tissue is deposited and gross and microscopy of uh, granulation tissue and finally we discussed in detail about tissue remodeling thank you for watching if you have liked this video please hit the like button if you have, if you have not liked you can comment okay please do subscribe and don't forget to share if you find this is interesting and useful thank you